hello, and welcome to my review of the Legacy Arms Excalibur Sword. This sword retails for 475 US dollars. It boasts a 34-inch blade made of 5160 steel, a guard and pommel made of full brass, and a stainless steel wire-wrapped grip. It most closely resembles Oak Shot Type 12 a typology with a J1 type wheel pommel. The scabbard that comes with this sword is wood-lined and has a black leather exterior. I will be grading this sword on two categories, functionality and aesthetic. As for functionality the full tan construction and steel choice of this sword contributes greatly. It holds a nice edge even under some extreme testing, including when I hit concrete with it. There was no visible chipping after that extreme test, but I do not suggest testing this sword or any others with this method. The point of balance on this sword is about where it should be at close to 3 inches from the guard and the note of the blade, or where it does not move back and forth after striking the pommel, is where you would want as it is at the point in which you would cut a target. It. Unfortunately that is where the positives end for the pros of this sword's functionality. The sword weighs 5 pounds 3 ounces, although this can vary from item to item, and is almost two times as heavy as other swords similar to this one. The full brass guard and thickness of the blade add a necessary weight and makes the sword hard to control and handle. Thrusting with this sword is not recommended at all due to its poor handling. It seems as though the filler was ground into the blade instead being hammered. A ground filler is not necessarily a negative thing as it keeps costs down and should not detract too much from functionality, but the shallowness of the filler combined with the thickness of the blade makes this sword heavy to hold, even though the point of balance is where it should be. Since it is a relatively long blade the weight you must support from the handle increases, meaning any extra weight is no tickable as in this sword. The guard may be close to where you are holding it and brings the point of balance closer as well, but it still is excess weight. The sword itself is properly made, barring these complaints, but in my research I have heard other complaints, mainly involving the heat treat of the steel. In others testing they have determined the blade is too soft to be considered battle ready, despite how loosely battle ready is thrown onto a product. If I had to give a number out of 10 for functionality, this sword would get a 3 out of 10, as it is technically usable, but not recommended. As a side note for functionality, the scabbard does not retain the sword very well and the belt straps broke relatively quick. The aesthetics of this sword are its greatest features. The full brass and wire wrapping give the impression that this is a noble man's sword, even a king's sword for battle. The pommel has a rhombus pattern on both sides with only minor evidence of machining. The one complaint is that in the guard next to the blade is a stamp number and line of identifying characters. The sword has a great simple look that is broken by these stampings being placed in plain sight. This placement is confusing and a major oversight by Legacy Arms. The blade itself is very good looking, clean and simple. It came with a near mirror polish which I replaced with a satin finish on my own. The scabbard looks very nice as it is simple with a little flare from the brass shape. In this category I give this sword a 7 out of 10. If there is a model without the stamp numbers I would give that an 8 with an average score of 4.5 out of 10. With a 6 being the lowest score to recommend a product. I cannot recommend buying this product if you want to use it. It is a well made wall hammer, a great wall hammer, and if that is your intention then I would consider it as it is one of the least ridiculous looking Excalibur inspired swords on the market. Thank 